all right what's up everyone so i'm out here in the garage today the weather's pretty crappy here it's going to be a few days to a week before we go racing again so i figured this is the best time as ever to go ahead and install a coolant pressure sensor in the car i've needed one for a long time um, i bought a sensor a while ago and just haven't gotten around installing it um, so i decided uh, to go ahead and do that today uh, so i'm gonna show you guys what i got right here um, take you along do the install on the car and then talk about some of the settings and stuff in the holly as well and then we'll check and make sure it works and then be good to go on the coolant pressure stuff so go ahead and show you show you what i got here on the table so first and foremost i got this zero to 100 psi transducer from low dollar motorsports these things are a nice alternative to the uh, holly 100 psi transducers that are like 100 bucks or or more these are like 30 bucks um, he tests them before he sends them to you and he has the uh, nice sheet right here that shows you how to set up your calibration in the holly and then also your nice pin out right here for your uh, your three wires going to the sensor so these things are these three wire sensors are pretty simple you've got a, uh, a sensor ground wire a signal wire and a 5 volt wire that go to these and then I have an AN line that runs under the intake, so my plan is to use this sensor port uh, dash 8 fitting right here and put it in that AN line with the sensor in this. And then I've already made my cable here for the sensor, so this is just the, the Holly three wire shielded cable. And I took and pinned the end on here and use some adhesive heat shrink to seal it all up so it's going to be nice and uh, watertight sitting under the, under the intake so i gotta pull some stuff out from under the hood right here i gotta pull this intake pipe off i gotta pull the alternator off so i can get to that fitting down there uh, in the valley of the engine block so and then uh get that get that uh so get that Get a sensor plumbed in, and then what I'm gonna do is run my wire under the intake through my firewall back here, and then go in the car and wire it up. So I'm gonna get this stuff pulled off and work on getting that sensor installed. All right, so I got the alternator moved over here out of the way. Um, so you guys can see down there. I know there's a lot going on down there in the in the valley but you can see that AN line down there right here I'm gonna loosen that up and that's where my adapter is gonna go and my sensor is gonna sit right there as well so I'm gonna loosen that up real quick and by the way if you guys have any AN fittings in your car and you don't own one of these you really need to get one you can get the adjustable ones or you can get the the wrench sets I'm probably gonna get a wrench set here soon but I got this for the time being uh, this wrench is made of aluminum, so it stops you from uh, from scratching your uh, aluminum AM fittings. It's uh, well worth the money. So I'm going to get this loosened up and put that sensor on. Alright, so before I put this uh, fitting, or this sensor right here into the fitting, I'll put a little thread tape on here real quick. Big thing I always try to do when I'm putting thread tape on is I try not to get any tape on the uh, like the first two or three threads of the fitting. And obviously, you always want to um, you want to wrap the tape around the fitting so that the the end of the tape, whenever you uh, so whenever you get this tape wrapped around here, you want to have it so that the end is facing away from the direction you gotta tighten the fitting in. Uh, it's a terrible job of explaining that, but hopefully you get the concept. So get that thread tape on there. All right. Just like that. All right, everyone that's watching this probably already knows how to put thread tape on, but showing you anyways. I'm gonna thread it here in my fitting.
get it hand tight. And then I'm gonna get this probably go at least like another quarter turn with a wrench here. All right, and that's really all you gotta do. That fitting should be nice and sealed up. I don't think it's gonna leak. You don't really have to go very far with a with an MPT fitting with, with a good thread tape on it. So I'm gonna take this over and plug this into my AN line now. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. So this is gonna go right here. And my camera doesn't wanna focus, but you guys can see what's going on. So I'm gonna get this down here. We can get that to focus. There we go. All right. So I got that end in, and now I just got to connect the back side up. Over. All right. So I got these lines tightened up in here. Kind of spaddling with them for a little bit, but got them in there. So that's how the pressure transducer is sitting. It's pretty nice. It's hidden under the uh, intake, which I like. See, so no one's even going to know it's there. Um, so next I'm gonna hook the wiring up, run that wiring through the firewall, figure out what length I need and then cut it to length and get my stuff put on there and get it hooked up to the ECU. Alright, so now I got the wiring hooked up right here to the sensor. Zoom in and show you guys. So that wiring is all hooked up. Everything's tight down there. I got the wiring harness for that sensor running through the firewall back here. Kind of hard to see, but it's going through that grommet right there. And then I've got everything wired up right here in the car. So I made this pretty easy for myself when I rewired the car over the winter. That right there, uh, you know, it is a terminal terminal strip. I know people have different opinions on them, but works good for me. I have sensor ground on there and I have sensor 5 volt that I can plug into. So I plugged my black ground wire into my sensor ground, my orange wire into my 5 volt source. And then up here I've got my inputs and outputs and it's on input number 3 right there. So that's all wired up. I gotta get all my paneling put back up right here. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up in the Holly software. And then we're gonna check and make sure it's working okay. All right, so everything's buttoned up now. Got my panels back on right here and I got everything hooked up in the front up there. So now comes the setup in the tune. So I got the car ignition on. I'm going to download the tune from the ECU right here. I'm going to show you guys how to set up this sensor. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your inputs and outputs tab right here and you're going to set up a coolant pressure input which I've already done but I did this like a while ago, but I'll talk you guys through it. So obviously you go over here and you, you label whatever you're in, you want your input to be named. And then this is a 5 volt sensor, so you would click on this drop down right here and you would choose 5 volt. So we've got it, and then after we select 5 volt, I'm going to go over, over to configure. And I'm going to configure this guy. It's going to have to be custom. So I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to go to custom pressure. And that gives me this calibration table down here. So right here is where you would start plugging in your values off the sheet that low dollar sent with the sensor. I already know what these values are. So it's a 0 to 100 PSI sensor. So I start off up here and my first value here is 0. That's for 0 PSI. 
and then I know my highest value that the sensor can read is 100 psi. So I fill that in, and then I highlight all of this. Right, get it highlighted, right click on it, and I'm gonna fill row values. And that does the math for me from zero to 100 PSI right here. And then these sensors from Low Dollar Motorsports read from uh, a half a volt, so 0.5. Uh, 0.5 volts would be a reading of zero PSI. And then 4.5 volts would be a reading of 100 PSI. So then you go down and do the same thing here on the bottom. You select the entire row. And then you fill row values. And it does the math for you. And then this looks all crazy right here because I haven't changed my scaling up here. So let me go and change my scaling on the sensor itself. So my sensor max, I'm gonna put to 100 PSI. Minimum zero PSI. And then I'm gonna go and make my, uh, uh, let's see, we'll go to caution max. We'll make that like 20 PSI. And then display max, normal max, and then we'll do the caution zero, zero. So basically from zero to 20 PSI is uh, kind of considered within range. And I'm not exactly sure how much coolant pressure the car runs. I'm gonna have to, once I get this put in the tune, I might crank the car up and get it warm and see what normal coolant pressure is. Um, so that I have a normal range so I know if I'm starting to lift ahead and put pressure in the coolant system um, I'll know because my coolant pressure will be out of that normal range you know it may get up to 30 40 psi of coolant pressure and that's no good that's that lets you know that you've got a leaking head gasket uh, for whatever reason and that'll help you catch it sooner uh, rather than later and you don't end up lifting ahead at 160 miles an hour like I did last year at my nationals so this is a really nice feature to have. So all that's set up. So now that that input is set up, you're gonna go over to your pin map and you're gonna go to your inputs, which we're on. And I wired that input into input three. So I'm gonna take my coolant pressure right here. And I'm gonna drag it down here to input three. And that is set up. I'm going to send the tune to the ECU. It wants me to cycle the ignition. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to fill this thing up with water. I'm going to start it and uh, make sure that this sensor is working. Alright, so the car has uh, got coolant back in it and I've got it started up and I've gotten it up to operating temp. So it's running about 181 degrees, 182 now degrees coolant temp. And I verified that the coolant pressure sensor is working right now. I've got 9 PSI of coolant pressure. And before I turned the video on, the uh, coolant pressure was up to about 10 PSI or 11 PSI. And then whenever the fan kicked on and cooled the car back down, the, the coolant pressure came down. Uh, I mean, that should be pretty normal. The higher your coolant temp gets, the higher your coolant temperature is going to be, the more the uh, fluid is going to try to expand. So that's working now. Pretty happy with it. So it looks like about 9 PSI is uh, going to be pretty normal around 180 to probably 185, maybe 190 degrees. So I know now, get this thing shut off. So now I know that if I see coolant pressure any higher than that, like significantly higher, I know I'm starting to lift a head gasket. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and like always, 
like and subscribe as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.